okay, I accidentally deleted <clears throat> the first part of the, the video, the first video segment. But uh, the part I deleted was ex explains that what I want to do is get this, the cable with this uh, connector. This is what connects up to the uh, to the Garmin Zoomer uh, with the pins and everything. Um, so it's to run that. And what I did is I ran it from back here forward. So now I'll just begin the video segments, how I explain everything. So here's the Garmin cable, the battery end, which I haven't even crimped on my connectors yet. And here's a little converter box. So what I've done, I've run it from back, back to forward. Um, these bolts aren't necessary to remove. I was trying to get wire through this, I'll call it a cable tray, and I was unsuccessful. So what I did instead, I removed, hold on one second, I removed uh, this bolt real easy. There's a couple, there's a, like a washer and a spacer. I've got all that in the washing machine there. And I just lifted the tank. I did not have to disconnect fuel lines or anything because I've just lifted it like what, three inches or something. And that was enough to where I could see. So I ran this cable. There's like a little uh, a wire organizer holder here. I ran it along there. And then I zip tied it here on a, on a cable, zip tied it here. There's my wire there. And then I just run it loose till I get forward with all the other wires and stuff way above the motor. And then I attached it with a zip tie to this cable. And I attached it to here. And then I run it up with all the other wires up through, gotta get up again ran it up through that hole with occasional zip tie, like maybe one more below, one or two more below. And then I ran it, here's another zip tie on the clutch cable, right, right here, having trouble getting it focusing on the right thing. Um, and then here's the wire up here. So this is the part, um, basically this at the cradle, this is the part, uh, just won't, there, maybe I'm just getting too close. This is the part that I'm basically stringing through to, and then zip tying in various places. So you don't want to attach this to, to the base because you're going to run that from back to forward if you're going to do it like, like I did. This came out pretty neat, I think. I mean, there is wire showing, but I don't think there's any getting around that uh, that I can figure out at least. But it's minimal on the handlebars choosing this point. So I use the U-bolt solution. You've got the U-bolt and you've got the clutch one. I like the clutch one better, but that just leaves more space for cables and zip ties, and I didn't want that. Plus, this puts it further from my eyeballs, which is better because I, I use reading glasses, and I won't need to, I think. That'll be further away, and I think I'll be able to see it. If not, I'll be wearing my my bifocal prescription sunglasses when I'm riding. So that's so far, and then I'll film some more as I get down to the battery level. So I removed both the side covers. This is the right side cover, two bolts. There's a left side cover. The reason I removed the left side cover, the manual says you wanna pull the main fuse before you do any battery work. Um, so I did that. You actually, it's kind of weird. You turn on the bike, the manual says, if I read it right, you turn on the motorcycle and uh, I let it cycle through. And and with the fob present, you you pull that the, the main fuse. I should have got, before I sat down, I should have showed you the fuse. It's just a big 40 amp fuse that plugs in here. So I did that. Um, I removed the, go to the other side of the bike. I removed the negative battery cable. Uh, that was easy. I just, with a Phillips head screwdriver, went down through the top and you can see the screw, uh, not in the video, I think, but it, it, you'll find it, it's easy. Um, but then the positive has a, has a, like a plastic guard over it and it's all one piece and this is what it is, this piece here. So you need to at least pull this out. I, now I haven't got to the positive terminal yet, but I think I'm basically there now. So what I had to do to get this off, I didn't disconnect this yet, and I'll see if I have to, uh, this this wire. Um, but what, so this is the negative terminal, the negative terminal that I removed. So I had to shimmy this with like a screwdriver to get this loose. 
I had to unbuckle this metal clip at the bottom. And then what I learned on YouTube from, a, from there's a someone who did a 2023 battery removal, Lowrider S, and I looked at his video. He talks about a tab on the opposite side. You kind of have to push this whole thing and work work loose that other tab. So it's basically like three points that are preventing you from moving this around. The one far on the other side that you just kind of push and work this around and you'll unhook it. This one with the screwdriver, this I also use a screwdriver, but if you got strong fingers, you can probably get it loose. And now I think I can expose a positive terminal. I decided to lower the tank back down and put these screws back in. These ones you don't have to remove. I was just trying to lift this when I was trying to fish the wire through here, which I failed at it originally. Uh, but the new method I, I did uh, worked. But I don't know that you necessarily even have to raise this. Um, so I'm just going to probably tuck this the little converter up inside there or I'll figure out something. Anyway, uh, I decided to lower the tank back down. So it's just this sleeve, a washer, and there's the uh, Allen head bolt side. And then this is going to be the other side with the, with the nut. Uh, so I just need to slip this on and then the washer and the nut. And then my tank will be back down. Okay, so I think I'm done. Um, so the positive wire's down on the battery terminal. I got the negative wire down. Uh, so the negative wire, like I say, is, is accessible. You can see the screw right in here. I don't see it on the video. Might be in the wrong spot. Yeah. Well, it's down there. Uh, not hard to get to with the screwdriver. Uh, it would be true for the positive one too, except you have to remove that, that cradle that goes around the top or whatever you want to call this thing that goes around the top of the battery. Getting it back in actually was easier than taking it out. It, everything just seemed to snap in. Uh, I didn't have to use it like a screwdriver or anything to get it out. So again, I snapped in here. The first attachment point is, is deep on the other side. I attached that first, just slid it in and kind of uh, wiggled it around and got that to snap in. And then uh, and then the clip here on the bottom, I just snapped that in. So there, there, and then the, the far one in there. And that this is the part that prevents you from having access to the Phillips head screw to, to do the, the positive terminal. That this, this plastic cover goes across and covers the positive terminal. Uh, so there's this little cover here that I've snapped in. Uh, stay snapped um, and then I'm ready basically to reassemble of course I didn't cover removing the seat that part's super easy it's just a single Phillips head screw uh, up here uh, the, to uh, remove the seat so I think I'm done uh, so I'll show it hooked up and running here in a few minutes so got the right side cover on uh, just two screws I'm getting ready to put the left side cover on, but now I'm going to go ahead and reinsert the main fuse. So I have earplugs in just in case the siren goes. I do have the siren module. Um, so to remove it, it was bike on, so bike was hot, fob in range, and then pull it. To insert it, it just says to insert it, but I've got the fob in, or, and keep the bike off. So I have the switch off, the power switch off on the bike, I'm going to reinsert it. I do have the fob in range. It didn't say that, but I do. And no alarm going off. That's cool. Oh, there it went. A little, couple little chirps. So, so got the left side cover on. There's a couple of like grommets it plugs into up here. And then there's one five thirty seconds. Kind of similar for the right side, although I can't remember if it's one or two grommets that plug in on that side. So I am pretty much done. I mean, I just got to slap the seat on and the one Phillips head screw, but I'm going to leave that off to see if this even works yet. So I thought I'd do that on video, live on video. Okay, so uh, that's what it looks like. The, the final, let me get back here a little bit, give you an idea what it looks like. Uh, by the way, I don't intend, when I'm not using it, I'm gonna take this off. I'm not sure what I'll do do with this yet, whether it just hangs and will be okay, or, or what, I'll figure that out later. Okay, so snap it in.
Okay, and there it powered on, so it's got power. The bike is off, but this is hardwired to the battery, so I expected that. I don't know that this would drain it enough to be a concern, but I'll leave it off, uh, leave it out of the cradle, just in case. So it's powered. Cool. Just one more quick thing, something new that, that just occurred. Uh, I got a prompt to switch to motorcycle mode, and now I see a motorcycle icon. Uh, so I don't know how it's gonna be different, but it's now in motorcycle mode. One last thing, there's a like a plastic blade that goes in a slot up here. So with this ready to go with the with the Phillips head screw, you pulling up on the front of the seat, it should not raise if you've got that that plastic fork or tongue or whatever into the slot.